Hello, hello everybody. It's me, Megan. I am your host. You're watching Miss Megan Knits. If you want to find me anywhere other than here, um, I will have links in the description below. This is a knitting and also crochet yarn, yarn and related podcast. Um, it's been two weeks since we last saw each other and um, I'm really excited to share with you some of the progress I've made on a lot of the stuff I've been working on. Um, first though, I will show you what I'm wearing, or at least the knitted thing I'm wearing, or this looks like crochet to me. Um, my grandmother's grandmother made this for her. Let me get a closer at view. Looks to be crocheted to me. And she gave it to me because she knows how much I do this kind of thing and how I would appreciate it. And I think it's so cool. I think it's really cool. Um, it'd be so cool if something that I've knit lasts for that many generations. And I know that if I made something for you know my granddaughter and she gave it to her granddaughter that I'd want her to wear it and use it and love it, right? So that's what I'm doing, I'm wearing it today. It's got fringe on the bottom. It's kind of tangled fringe because it's a million years old, but it is so cool. So I wore it today with my sweater. I know, it's June, June 25th, and it has been raining and raining and raining and we got like three nice days over the weekend this past weekend and now it's raining again and I'm just sick of rain <laughs> but I also wore a pretty springy dress and some leggings just want to show you how I styled it so I have several finished objects to show you guys today I know last time I don't think I had any or maybe I had one um, but I actually have one two three to show you today so the first one I'm going to show you is this hat I made for my boyfriend. I designed it for him. The pattern will be available on Ravelry later this week, and I will um, link you to my designs page where you can find it if you are so inclined to purchase it. I'm not sure how much it'll be for or anything like that, but I just wanted to put that out there. I talk a lot about it in a pre-recorded segment I made. Um, so I will cut to that in a minute, but first I just want to tell you the needles and yarn I used because I don't think I mentioned that in my pre-recorded segment. So if I can read my own handwriting. This is, uh, not the pom-pom, but the hat itself is Karen Simply Soft in the colorway Dark Country Blue. And I used US 8 uh, circular knitting needles, 16 inch circular knitting needles. I used uh, Knitter's Pride Carbons. And then I use Knitter's Pride Bamboo DPNs for the top. Okay, so please enjoy past Megan also wearing a scarf because it's still cold. Um, telling you about this creation. Hey everybody, it's me in a pre-recorded segment. Uh, I just wanted to talk really quickly about my first FO of the episode, Honey Bear's hat. I finished it. So I just wanted to talk about it before I gave it to him um, so that we could go over all the details. I did design this myself. The pattern will be uploaded to Ravelry. It should be uploaded by the time this episode comes out, so I will link to it below. I started here with a one by one tubular cast on, and pardon, it's still a little wet. I put it through the dryer, but it didn't quite dry. Anyway, I started here with a one by one tubular cast on. I'll put a link to the tutorial. I used it with great. Very pink knits, always love her. And did a one by one ribbed brim, there's no secret there. And then for the body of the hat, I hope this shows up, I did a chevron pattern that was called flame stitch in my stitch dictionary. I don't know what that focus, I don't know if the lower light is better or not. There we go. It was called a flame stitch pattern in my stitch dictionary, but I thought it looked much more like a chevron than a flame. I am backlit here. I'm going to stand in front of this window. Okay. But there it is. And it runs all the way up to the top through the decreases. And then the decreases are done mostly in purl stitch because I thought that would look better. I can take the pom-pom off so you can see better. 
The decreases are done mostly in purl stitch because that's kind of how the pattern wanted to go. So I decreased to the top of these are all decreases, but purl stitch just ended up being how the chart was. So that's what I did. Um, it is a little bit tricky doing uh, rounds of all pearls on DPNs. Um, sorry about that. I did it, I managed. I have a couple of ladders here and there, but I don't think anybody will notice. But if this might be a good opportunity for magic loop. This might be a good opportunity for uh, two circulars or your favorite method of closing up a hat, um, just because the pearls are a little bit hard. Um, and what I did, as you just saw, I have a buttonhole top here. So this is my finger. I didn't close up the top all the way. I closed up the top such that a button or a series of buttons that I have could fit through it. And then what I did is I made pom-poms. This is one of them. This is this yarn is some cotton mill ends that I've had forever ever. Uh, he requested blue, but not like navy blue, like blue blue. So I figured this is blue blue. <laughs> and I sewed a button. I attached the button two different ways on two different pom-poms, trying to figure out which way I liked better. So this way I actually took a sewing needle and thread and, and sewed it on. But then I have another pom-pom. This one is some darn good yarn. I got their subscription box for a couple months. Didn't like it, might talk about that in another episode. Uh, they, but I had a small amount of their yarn left over and I figured a rainbow pom-pom would be fun. He requested a rainbow pom-pom too, so. And I, this one, I used, um, you can even see it if I, I used the yarn I used to tie the pom-pom, I used to secure the button. So I'm not sure which way I like better, which way is more secure, I'll have to see over time. Um, this is my first time using a button buttonhole method for removable pom-poms. Usually I use a method where you thread the things through and stitch to a button on the other side for stability. This is an easier way for someone who doesn't know how to knit, won't have a tapestry needle on hand, whatever, to be able to remove the pom-poms and put them back on. So let me just show you the hat with the pom-pom again. Yes, so this is it. Um, in the pattern, I do provide a link to the tutorial for the one by one cast on and explain how I modified it to be one by one because she does two by two. So um, I have that link in there for anybody who struggling to try it, but also you could use whatever stretchy cast on you prefer. I mean, it's completely up to you. It's worth noting that this is a slouchy hat. Um, it's supposed to have a fold over brim, so that's why the brim is so long. If I can fold it over on my lap here. There we go. So it's a fold over brim. I got it. I got it. Um, it's supposed to have a fold over brim. What's really cool about this brim is you can fold it over just halfway or you can fold it over more. And what that'll do is change the slouchiness of the hat. So for example, you could have the hat and not fold over the brim at all and have just a really slouchy hat, with the pom-pom all the way down here. Or you could fold over the brim about halfway like it was designed to and have a hat. Or, you could really fold it over or even roll it. So see, I have it folded, I'm gonna roll it and have a hat with basically no slouch. So it's completely adjustable. That's one reason I said it's only one size adult. Um, although a teenager or even a child could probably wear this as well. It's just gonna be more slouchy the smaller the head, um, if that makes any sense. I hope I didn't get makeup on that. I just washed it. <laughs> no, no, we're good, we're good, we're clean. Super proud of the design. Took a little bit more work than I was thinking it was going to, um, but hey, that's how it goes. All I gotta do at this point is get some pictures of it. Um, Bear said he'd model for me, so that's gonna be really sweet. You guys are gonna be able to see him if you download the pattern or if you look it up on Ravelry, you'll be able to see. Maybe not his face, but like the back of his head with the hat on, so. <laughs> that's exciting, right? On to whatever else I have finished or maybe worked in progress this episode. <laughs> Bye. Now, wasn't that a treat? <laughs> I'm back. Um, and yeah, that was my first FO, so I'm super excited. My second FO is something I've been working on the past two episodes, and I finally finished it. Um, it is backwards. 
my girl from the grocery store shawl. So I think when I last podcasted, I was getting towards the end of the main color section and I was worried I was going to run out of yarn. Um, I didn't. I didn't have to do anything special. I didn't have to do anything different. I used the needles the um, pattern called for, which were a U.S. size 7. Can't read. I wrote in pink and the book is too far away. <laughs> U.S. size 7 uh, needles. Those were the Knit Picks Rainbow Wood interchangeable circular needles. Um, and I thought I was going to run out of yarn because I didn't have enough according to the pattern, but I didn't run out. So I guess my gauge was tighter. Tighter? Would tighter make me need less yarn? I think tighter would make me need less yarn. So I think my gauge was tighter than the pattern designers, but that worked out really well because I didn't run out of yarn. And the shawl is still nice and big. I can really stretch it all the way to the end. So here's the tippy tip tip where you start. This is a wonderful boomerang shape. And then of course there's the end with the lace that I blocked last night. Doesn't it look lovely? It's kind of misaligned. Like this first section is misaligned with this section because my stitch counts were off. Um, I had issues even with the first section of the lace, the stitch counts were off. I kind of just fudged it and I think it looks really good. I'm very proud of my fudging it. Because I, I wasn't counting my stitches along the way every checkpoint like you were supposed to because it's a lot of stitches and it was a shawl and I figured I'd wing it and um, it turned out just fine for me. I'm going to wear it and love it and use it all the time. Um, this yarn is really special to me because I bought it at Stitches, Stitches United, which was in Hartford, Connecticut. And my mom drove me all the way up there and we each got yarn for a shawl from the Webbs booth. Um, Little did we know, it would actually be less of a drive to just go to webs. Um, <laughs> but the yarn I used was Mad Tosh, Tosh Merino Light, 100% Merino Wool, fingering weight, 420 yards. It doesn't say the grams on it, which made it difficult for me to figure out exactly how many yards I used. Um, I don't even think I figured it out. I think I just told Ravelry I used the whole skein, and I didn't. I had like this much left over of both colors. And the colorways are hard to read, but this one, Stormborn, I think is the gray. And this one, Mad Leopard, with no D, Mad Leopard, Leopard, is the white with gray and blue speckles. And I'm pretty sure the gray speckles in here are the exact same gray as the tonal gray over here. Uh, I will say there were a lot of ends to weave in. I don't mind weaving in ends. What I did was I carried this main color up the side. I think it was this side that you carry the colors up. I could be wrong. If I could find where I wove in my end. Yeah, this side. This side down here. Because this, maybe it was this side. I don't remember which side it was. But I carried the main color up the side, but the um, gray was too far apart really for me to keep twisting it up the side and I didn't want to have two balls of yarn attached all the time because I'm a little clumsy and things get tangled and I just wasn't about that. So I clipped the ends and didn't clip them, but I cut the ends and you just wove them in later. Same thing for up here. I twisted the gray as I went along, but for these two single color stripes, I actually did have to weave in ends. And then of course this is the end at the beginning and end of each colored section. So it was a lot of ends. I had a little pile. <laughs> And I was going to show you the little pile, but I decided to clean up my little area here. Um, but I had a little pile of ends. I wove them all in uh, while watching Family Feud one night, and then early the next morning when I was awake and nobody else was, and it was a nice peaceful time. I don't mind weaving in ends. I really like it, especially in garter stitch, because you can do the little umbrellas and smiles thing, and you can kind of just weave them along, and it's not difficult, and you can make sure everything looks really good. So, F up. Oh, I should try it on. I also just want to put it on. It's merino, so it's squishy and soft and beautiful. So I think I would wear it at this end over and then wrap this end around. Maybe like this. I'm no expert in wearing shawls because I only recently started knitting them for myself. Here it is. It doesn't completely go with my outfit, but... I think it looks just fine. Feels really good. Squishy, but not too warm. 
and my back can warm if I leave it on for a while, but it's not too warm. So let's see, that was my first finished object, or second finished object. My first was a hat, my second was a shawl. My third finished object is something I have never done before, but I was so excited about. So I gotta tell you the whole story, I gotta tell you the whole story. I was painting my nails, and as I like to do when I'm painting my nails, of course I chip now, I just realized that. As I like to do when I'm painting my nails, I watch crafty classes, because they're great, not crafty classes, blueprint classes. Everything on them still says craftsy, but they're not, they're blueprint now, and it's really confusing, but I'm blueprint classes. And I was watching some crochet ones, because um, I need to beef up my crochet skills. I'm not as skilled at crochet as I am at knitting, and I wanted to try some new crochet things, and I ended up watching a class on Amigurumi Woodland Animals with Stacy Trot. I made an amigurumi. I've never made a stuffed animal or a toy of any kind before. And I'm gonna show you how he turned out. Oh, he's right behind me. He's a bird. <laughs> so cute, right? Um, he is made using an F hook, um, which is pretty small for a worsted weight yarn, I would think. And he still has little gaps in him, especially in this area where my tension wasn't quite so even. So I'm not sure if it's because I was using a boy hook and I'm used to using Bates hooks. Um, my tension in crochet is usually better than this. I'm not sure if it's because I was crocheting through the back loop like she recommended instead of crocheting through both loops like I usually do. Um, but yes, I made a bird. I didn't have safety eyes, so I skipped the section on baby safe eyes and made some baby safe crocheted eyes and then use some of the same blue yarn to make the little arrow. I was gonna make a star for his pupil, but I liked the little arrow, so I just kept that. The yarn I'm using is some of that cotton mill ends that I bought in a wild shopping spree many years ago that I've been trying to use up and get rid of for a very long time. So he took up some of the blue and some of the pink. Not a lot. He didn't use a lot of yarn, actually, and I'm totally looking forward to making more birds with my yarn scraps. I think that would be so much fun. Uh, the pattern was really super simple, so I think it'd be easy to make like a bird in fingering weight with a really teeny hook and make a little teeny bird, or use like a G hook and some super bulky yarn to make a really big bird. How big is he? He's about this big. He's about this big. So, we can make him be bigger big bird. I mean there's so many options you could do. You can make wings different colors, you can make them striped. Um, and it's not hard. Uh, basically it's single crochet and increases and decreases. And she gives you the pattern with the class. It's a super fun bit class. Um, and the pattern is also sold separately on Ravelry. So I will link you to both the class and the pattern if you already know Amigurumi or you are just really good at crochet and don't think you need the class. Um, the bird pattern is up there, as well as um, the patterns for the other animals in the class. Now, I plan on working my way through the whole class, so in future podcast episodes, you might see me with a bear, a deer, and a raccoon, uh, just because I think they're so cute. There we go. He can, he can live right there. We're done with finished objects. Now we're gonna move on to works in progress. And I'm gonna bring out a work in progress that I didn't bring out last time, but I did bring out the time before that. And that is my Squaring the Circle Blanket uh, by Shelly Husband. If I unroll it here, it's gotten really big. So I can put this on my lap actually as we talk, but it would get very hot. So here it is. Now, the circles are Bernat Home Premium in this colorway that I think is really funky and fun. And then the edges around them are Karen Simply Soft in teal. I am using an H hook with this yarn. So it's coming along. It's almost as tall as it's gonna be down at this end. I can add one more square to the end here. It's gonna be an eight by 10 and each square is roughly six by six, which will make it like a nice big Afghan, um, but not a bed blanket. And then I plan on doing a border around the edge because this edge doesn't look very finished to me. I plan on doing probably either a single crochet or double crochet in the Burnout Home Premium and then cap it off with a double crochet around in the uh, Karen Simply Soft. No, 
That is not Karen Simply Soft, that's Karen One Pound. Did I say Simply Soft? If I did, I was lying to you. This is Karen One Pound <laughs> in teal. Uh, not nearly as soft as the Karen Simply Soft, but once it's gonna be washed and steamed, um, it'll, it'll feel really good. I'm not worried about it. My next work in progress is the Wharfdale sweater. Now I've mentioned this sweater several times, uh, but I haven't actually said the name of it because I keep forgetting. But it is the Wharfdale sweater by Sarah Hatton, Hayton? Hatton? I hope I'm, one of those is right. And for this one, I'm using US 2 needles for the ribbing and US 4 needles for the body. Oh, I am smack dab in the middle of a row. But here you go, here it is. I'm so sorry for being in the middle of a row like that. Last time I was knitting on it, I was fishing with my dad. And that actually brings me to a really good point. That because this is just plain stockinette um, all the way up, it's been a really great travel project or a project that I take with me on the go, um, a project I take with me you know, to church or to the ice cream place or to wherever I go in my daily life. I was fishing with dad um, and knitting. He, he was fishing, I was knitting. Um, last time I was working on this and it's great because you can just kind of, it's easy, it's stockinette, so it's all knits or all pearls and you can just kind of crunch it down and sh shove it in your bag. You don't have to worry about it anymore. It's a little big for a travel project. A lot of people take socks or hats as their travel projects because they're small and I agree with you there. This doesn't live in my purse, but a lot of times I've been taking it with me to get some work done on it and I've actually really liked doing it. Oh, the yarn I'm using pull out a new skein because my skein's almost used up, is the Fiberco Luma, and I have the tag, came prepared this time. So this is the Fiberco Luma, in the colorway Pearl River, a lofty blend of organic cotton, linen, merino wool, and silk. So this one is a DK weight, it's 50 grams in a skein, um, it's 50% wool, 25% cotton, 15% linen, and 10% silk. And it's 50 grams to 137 yards, or 125 meters, depending on where you live. But yes, Pearl River is the colorway. I think it's beautiful, I like working with it. I am picking plant matter out of it as I go, but it's no biggie. Um, and it's buzzing on me. It's definitely starting to, oh, a little yellow bird's back. We have a little yellow bird. He's about this big. And he flies into our window a lot. Like he's trying to get in, he's tapping on our window, trying to get in. I think I mentioned him before because he came in before, but he's right there right now. So I mentioned it again. Yes, it's fuzzing on me. I'm, I'm getting fuzz as I knit with it. I'm hoping it doesn't turn into a really pilly sweater. I'm not a big fan. It's not pilling like the pills are stuck to it. It's just a bunch of fuzz is coming off as I'm knitting it. So, oh, and the sweater I'm working on is on the cover of this magazine. This is the Knitter, issue 127, I believe, 119. The Knitter, issue 119. So this is the front, the XO cable. I'm working on the back right now, which is why it's plain stock in it. Then over here, the whole thing is knit flat. So the front and back are knit flat, and then you pick up for the sleeves and knit flat back and forth, and then seam the sleeves together, and then you pick up for the neck and knit the neck back and forth. I'm not exactly sure how it's done off the top of my head, but when I read the instructions, they made perfect sense. So I'm gonna follow the instructions. Yeah. Anyway, that's the sweater I'm knitting. I uh, am keeping the magazine in my bag now when I wasn't before, because when I was taking it on the go, people would come up to me and ask me what I'm knitting and when I would show them just that flat piece that I had so far and tell them it's a sweater, they'd just be like, okay. Um, so this way I can be like, no, it's that sweater. <laughs> That's what it's gonna look like when it's all done. And again, my other concern, the patterns in metric. I haven't had a problem other than choosing knitting needle sizes and really that's all about getting gauge anyway. Um, so I've just been using the other side of my tape measure, which in this tape measure is really confusing because on most of them, you have your inches on one side and your centimeters on the other. But on this one, you have inches and centimeters on the same side on the back. So you gotta be careful that you're looking at the centimeters. And then the longer lines are the halfway lines 
and the middle lines are the lines that actually make a centimeter and I knew that because I had to take a different tape measure and make sure I figured that out correctly to make sure I was measuring properly. So that's just a little annoying. This is just a cheap tape measure I got off Amazon so can't complain about it too too much. And then in case you're wondering what I keep in this outside pocket instead of on the inside in my notions case, um, the measuring tape because you have to keep taking it out to measure and I don't want to have to open the bag and open the notions case and do all that. A pen and a pack of post-it notes um, where I scratch ideas or things I need to remember. So one of the things I like to do is if I'm trying to get to 43 centimeters, I'll jot down 43 centimeters and then I can just pull this out and look at it instead of having to dig through and find the pattern and open it up and find where I was and find what the measurement was. I can just have this right here. I was fishing and I came up with some design ideas so I just jotted those down there too. It's just perfect for writing down anything you gotta write down. I have a pencil in my bag in the Notions case. Um, so I don't write on everything in pen. I don't write on my patterns in pen usually. Um, but I write on my post-it notes in pen because they're just gonna be thrown away at some point anyway. Oh, and this bag is a lovely little bag I got at AC Moore. I don't think it's supposed to be a knitting bag. I think it's just supposed to be a bag bag, but I really love it for knitting because it's nice and big. It has one big zipper at the top. And it's got pockets inside all the way around and it's super cute. And it fits like a whole sweater in it, no problem. And I can carry it around, it's, it's great. Coffee break. Duncan has um, cookies and cream coffee right now. And uh, I got my regular which means with cream and sugar in this part of the country. I don't know what other parts of the country it's different, but um, it's so good. I really shouldn't be drinking caffeine at this time of day, but it's so good. Everybody runs on Dunkin'. Two more works in progress, and then I have a new acquisition. I'm gonna to talk to you about Flarn. Now before I talk to you about Flarn, I wanna tell you that I have a whole video dedicated to Plarn. I will link it in the description box. And in this video, I talk about my Plarn mats that I make for charity with my church and how I make them and why I make them and all the ins and outs of making the Plarn and um, all that stuff. So I'm not gonna go into it here, but if you would like to see that video, I will link it below. But I just wanted to show you the progress I've made on the mat so far. Now I haven't been working on it as diligently as I probably should have been. I was motivated to pull it out and work on it a little bit. And I really like making the plarn when my wrists are too sore to knit because making the plarn doesn't make my wrists sore. And here's the mat so far. So here's about how wide it is. I know when I show it in the plarn video, it's this teeny little strip at the bottom that I show you, but it gets to be much bigger like this. It is going to be roughly six feet tall. And I say roughly because I don't measure it. That takes way too much time, way too much effort. Doesn't really matter if it's a little too big or a little too small. What I do is I kind of hold it above my head about like that. And I say, well, I'm about 5'7". That's about five inches or so. So I am using a Q hook to crochet this plarn. And the plarn I make is roughly equivalent to a super bulky yarn. So it actually, makes a fabric that has a lot of stretch, a lot of drape, so you can see how drapey that is, a lot of give, and it's really lightweight given its size. And this is important for a homeless person sleeping mat, because that's what this is, because it's important, um, the air in it, the air holes actually give it insulation from the ground, keeps you warmer, um, but also it's drapey enough to wrap around yourself if you wanna huddle under it to keep warm. Um, it is squishy enough to sleep on, so it's not dense, it's squishy, so you can lay down on it and be comfortable. And it rolls up and can be carried along with you easily because you don't necessarily have somewhere to put your bed if you're living on the streets. So being able to carry it with you is important. It'll, um, when I finish it, it'll have straps on it. So I like to, and maybe this is just me being a little nitpicky, but I like to roll my balls of plarn uh, sorted by color. So I'll do a ball of plarn that is, for example, all gray, or all red and white, or all white and blue. And then I make stripes. And sometimes I make like gradients, and sometimes I make like color blocking. This time I decided to make relatively skinny stripes. 
And I just think that makes it look a little bit prettier. And I think that if you're giving something away to charity, no matter what you're making, hats, scarves, whatever, if you're giving something away, it should be something you're proud of because it's a gift. And even if it's not quite your style or quite, you know, what you would want to have for yourself and wear, maybe it's something that someone else would like, you know? I also apologize for any wrestling that got caught on camera. It is plastic grocery bags. I forgot to mention, they're plastic grocery bags. That's what the yarn is made of. So um, there will be wrestling. It's just part of it. My last work in progress are what I'm calling my San Francisco socks. Now I'm knitting these up on US 2 needle. I'm using my Knitter's Pride Carbons. Sorry, I'm impaling my sock with my own needles because I just, this is the sack I shove in my purse. I shove in my bag. I shove everywhere and I take along with me. So this is my second sock. Um, the yarn I'm using, I'm using Karma Chameleon Hardy Sock Base in the shade Phosphorescent Rose for the main part of the body. And I really love how that's coming out. It's coming out very watercolory. The one thing I don't love about it is it's not super wash, but it's still really nice to work with. It doesn't split. It's nice and smooth. Um, I'm really enjoying working with it. The mini that I use for the toe and for the heel, but not for the cuff. Um, just because I don't like contrasting cuff, usually, um, is the Houndstooth Fiber Arts, I'm trying to read my notes, Houndstooth Fiber Arts Twinkle Base in the shade Moonlight, or the colorway Moonlight. So you can see it has Stellina in it. Both of these are a good merino nylon blend. Both of them are not super wash, but I think I can take care of a pair of socks and hand wash them. I'd prefer not to, but I will. Um, the reason I'm calling these my San Francisco socks is because I bought this yarn in San Francisco at a yarn store, at Firebird Yarns in San Francisco on, on Hate. So these are my San Francisco socks. They're like my souvenir. So these are toe up, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> these are toe up. Um, I'm using the My First Toe Up Socks Craftsy Class pattern. Um, and I'll link to the pattern in the show notes below, but it's not hard to find on Blueprint. If you just go on Blueprint and say, my first toe up socks, it'll, it'll pull up for you. I'm using the fingering weight sock version for people with narrow feet because I have narrow feet, <laughs> except I'm modifying it. So instead of doing an afterthought heel where you put scrap yarn in and then pull out the scrap yarn, I find I don't like the look of that. And I don't like doing that as much as I like cutting in a heel. So I'm actually gonna cut in my heel. So here's my marker. Hard to see because it's um, pink on pink, but that's where my heel is gonna be. And I'm not sure if I want my heel on this side or that side, but I have the marker there so I can measure how long the leg is gonna be to make sure it matches my other sock nice and perfectly. Um, I'll show you the other sock, the completed sock. I carry around the completed sock because I know people are gonna ask me, what are you making? And then I can say another one of these. <laughs> Last podcast, this is a, a finished, not a finished object, a half object. So I wanted to show you, this is like a progress keeper, how much progress I had made. Um, clearly I finished it, so I didn't make any more progress on this sock since then. You see it has the heel cut in. And if I were to hold it out the pretty way, I don't have sock blockers, so my socks block the ugly way. So if I were to hold it out the pretty way, you can see I have a heel. You see not an ugly way or a pretty way, it's just a way of holding your socks. <laughs> I just think the um, nice sock blocker way is nicer looking personally. But anyway, my, I'm putting my heel in seven inches up and then I have another seven inches for the leg, yes. And then a half inch of twisted one by one rib at the top. I had to, I had to read that and I didn't know that. It's all vanilla because that's what I like to work on when I'm out and about. And also I wanted to show off the yarn really well. And I think vanilla socks always show off yarn really well. Unless you have like a, a plain yarn, a solid yarn, I think, or a heathered yarn. I think um, those work really well with texture. That's just a personal opinion. Do what you want. So those are all of my knitting, but I wanted to talk about yarn that I bought. I was at a farmer's market, a local farmer's market in my town and I met a lady named Janet and her friend, whose name I don't remember because it's not written on my yarn label because she didn't make my yarn, Janet did. But those two ladies were spinning. They had their spinning wheels set up 
and all, right there in the farmer's market and they were spinning with sheep's wool and it was so cool. Um, spinning is something I'd love to take up someday, but I think before I'd buy a spinning wheel, I would buy a sock machine. So it's not my first big expensive thing I would purchase if I had the opportunity to. I would um, work with other stuff first. But I'm just going to show it to you. So it says handmade by Janet on it. Both of these are 100% wool. They're 100 yards of worsted weight. I don't think it says worsted weight on here, but she told me it was worsted weight. And they're hand spun by my new friend Janet. Look at how beautiful this is. So I bought two colors because when I touched it, it wasn't super soft. It was wool, like a woolly wool. And I immediately thought of color work. And she had this color that I knew would be a good neutral color to do some color work with. None of these have names. They're just stuff she had. And then I bought this green. But I was really torn between this green and a really bright blue. And I immediately saw this and thought fingerless mitts. Or mittens. Like regular mittens with fingers in them. Not fingers. Um, a singular finger part, because who has time for gloves, am I right? If I knit you gloves, just know I really love you. If I knit you black gloves, just know I really, really, really love you. But yeah, so I'm thinking of doing some colorwork fingerless mitts. I was on Ravelry this morning browsing patterns, and I was torn between doing the Hastings mitts by Tracy Miller of the Grocery Girls. I've already knit a pair of those. Um, I like them. I didn't like the mitten top of those because they're done in a twisted rib. And at my gauge, the twisted rib just let the cold air right in. So my whole hand was super warm from the color work part of the mitt, and then the cold air got to my fingertips. And I was like, what is the point of this? So I would modify it if I did it again. But other than that, it was really nice mitten pattern. I really liked it. And if I did the fingerless version, then I wouldn't have to worry about not modifying the mitten top at all. And then there are, um, I don't know, some other ones I found. Maybe slip stitch color work that I really like, but I wanted to try Fair Isle, so I nixed those. Um, I found some hats that were really cool, but I really wanted mittens, so I got rid of those. Um, so I'm still deciding what I want to do with these. And as my mom said when we got in the car, she said, these are a winter project. <laughs> Which I think was just her giving me permission to not use it right away, basically. They're a winter project. They're wool. They're a winter project. She actually bought them for me. Two skeins these two skeins. She bought them for me. And I love her very much for doing that for me. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so, so much for listening to me babble. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I enjoyed myself quite a lot. I'm going to be editing now, which I will maybe enjoy a little bit less. <laughs> but I will enjoy it. All the buttons to like and comment and subscribe are below. And if you're watching me, please, please comment and, you know, let me know. What do you think? How am I doing? You know? Uh, it's going to be good to get some interaction. I will talk to you guys later. Bye.